What we're going to take a look at right now is our gradients and how to create them. Okay, so let's begin first at the beginning and we'll just start and we'll just make a simple rectangle shape and we'll give it a color so it's orange. And if I decided, okay, you know what, I want to put a gradient on this shape. Well, there's a couple different ways we can do this. We could begin and we could go into our swatch library and we could come here and we could open up our gradients. Oops, let me do that one more time. So we click this little triangle, we come down and we come to our gradients. Then we see we have all of these different gradients. So we could say, oh, let's look at the gradients for wood. And there are many more, as you just saw. Um, whoopsie, gradients, we could come to, you know, foliage, okay. And we could open up a whole bunch of these different colors. I could take this um, and, you know, load it into my shape. Actually, oh, it's interesting, when I do that, see what happens? It loads it into the metal. Now what I want to show you before we go and do that, that that is actually the default. So let's actually come in and let's draw another shape um, and click. Now the default when we hit the gradient is this right here, this linear gradient. And what automatically, what happens, and probably automatically if not, uh, you can come over and open it, the gradient window opens. Now when we want to open up our gradient window, we come to window, gradient and we can open up this window. And what we're seeing here is how this gradient is made. In Illustrator, we click this little arrow right here and we can see that these are all of our default um, gradients. We can also change our gradient so it's radial, okay? But let's keep it at linear. Now, this is the information on this gradient. There are two color stops, two color buckets we can say. The first one is white and it's at 100% opacity. And the last one is black, and that is at 100% opacity. Our slider is in the middle. There's our gradient slider. If we were to move it over, we could see that that would change it, uh, but we're gonna keep it in the middle. Um, right there, about. Okay, uh, let's put it at actually 50%, let's say. There we go, that's where it was. Uh, so that's the story. That is how it's made. Now, we could also come in and we could totally change this. So we could say, hmm, I want to go black to, I want to go tan, dark brown to white. How would I do that? Well, this is what I would do. I would come to this little black paint bucket of sorts. I would double click it. I would get my swatches and then I would choose my color. Now my gradient is completely different. I might decide, you know what? I want to go from brown to yellow. Well, same thing. I click right here, open up my swatch, and I choose, hmm, not so wild about that one. Maybe I'll go with more one like that. Now, what you can do too is you can actually, you know, make sure before you begin that you load those colors in that you want. Um, and so, and then you can make those gradients. Now, so I'm going to go white here. Another thing that I could do is I can actually add another color stopper. So maybe I want to go from this dark to a medium to a really light. So I could click in the center. I add another paint bucket. I double click. I lighten that. Now I have three of my paint buckets. I can play around with my slider. Um, until I get something that I really that I really like. And these gradients can be very custom. What we're beginning to see is that these gradients can be very custom. Now, we come over to this tool right here, which is the gradient tool. And what we're gonna find is that the gradient tool only works on something that has a gradient. So for instance, if I take this gradient tool and I click over here, nothing happens, okay, because this square uh, doesn't have a gradient on it, but I could click here and what I do is I get this gradient slider So in a lot of ways this gradient slider that we just put on here is it's very similar to this one right here um, I could take my gradient and slide it up Move it around. Let's see. Don't want that one So it's in different parts of the shapes I can 
tapes. Now what's great about using the slider is sometimes it always looks a little bit different when it's actually on that shape. But one thing that we want to note, I'm going I'm edit undo, going back before that, is we can also come in and change, oopsie, let me select this, hold on. We can also come in and change where the gradient is laying on the object too. So I just said up oh, negative 45, um, we could go, if we wanted it to be upside down negative 90. Okay, so we, we're not just, we, we don't, only, we don't only, only have to do it and we can move it like this. We don't only have to do it uh, one way, right? We can also do the same thing on here too. This one right here reverses the gradient. So wherever it is, it reverses it. Um, and there we have it. Now, let's say that I really like this gradient that I created, I could save it. And the way that I do that is I come right here and I just click add swatches. Okay, and now what we'll find is this gradient will be loaded in here. Now, what else I could do is I could come in and say new swatch. And I'll say, you know, you can name it if you want to. Okay, and here it is. It's it now is and I saved it twice. Okay, and there it is now. So there there we have it. Okay. Uh, about the gradients. So those were our two things that we just looked at. Let's look at another kind of gradient that we can create working with opacity. Okay, so we come on in here and we have our ellipse tool. We're going to get a triangular shape like so. And let's just fill in just a plain old color in here. Um, and maybe what I might want to do instead, hold on for one minute. Okay, what we might want to do here is choose a different color because I don't like that color that much. Cool. Okay. All right. So here we have our color and we want to put a gradient in to it. So I'm going to come in and that's the gradient I have. Who knows why I just did all that. So I can come in and I can choose a color here. Uh, maybe I'll come on over to this paint bucket over here, choose a color over here. Now, if I want to actually, I want to get rid of this middle paint bucket, what I would do is I could click and actually just take it and drag it off. Or, there we go, I just dragged it off. Let's see, is that, that one's still under there. Hold on for one minute. Okay, so what you do to delete this is you select it and then you click the trash can. Now it is deleted. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put this at zero. Um, and we have our slider. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the white and I'm going to put it at an opacity of zero. Okay, now what does that mean? Now it means that this is transparent. So I could take this and you know you run it over top of another object and there it is okay so it is opaque now this other shape um, now why would that be a good idea well what we might find is you may have a shape uh, and you might actually have well there's a lot of reasons why it's good you could run objects over top of each other okay uh, but you might also find that you might have a shape and I just drew an ellipse. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle with a rounded object. Now what I want is I want this bottom shape to be on top. So I come to object, arrange, bring to front. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come to the top here, edit, copy, edit, paste in front. Move this down. Okay, now I want this to be behind 
the first one. So I'm going to come up to Object, Arrange, Send Backward. Oh, let's try it one more time. Object, Arrange, Send it Back. There we go. Okay. I'm going to turn this, whoopsie, this uh, stroke off. Okay, so there we have it. So we have this cylindrical shape. Now, what we might want to do is we might want to create a shadow on underneath this shape, and that might be a good time to have the shape actually um, end up having going from a darker color to a transparent. So before we do that, let's actually put a background in for the shape. So I begin with my rectangle tool. So we can say this is like the table that it is sitting on. I'm going to change the color of this. Hmm, that color's too much like the color it already is. Make it a little bit darker. We'll send this to the back, object, arrange, send to back. All right, so now let's say that this was a surface that this object was sitting on and we wanted to create a shadow for this object. Well, what we could do is, let's take this middle shape right here. We could come into edit, copy, edit, paste in front. Uh, we could then flip this object around so we could come into object, transform, transform each. We could reflect it X and angle it 180 degrees and click OK. And now this is an object underneath this object. Now again, object arrange. This is with working with our shapes. Send to back. Uh-oh. Hold on. We don't want it to be behind the brown. We'll say bring forward. Okay, whenever we go bring forward, send to back, we'll send it all the way to the back. Send to front, we'll bring it all the way to the front. When we say bring forward, it will just bring it up in front of whatever is right in front of it. Send backward, same thing. It will just go one, not all the way. Now what we could do with this one, this would be a really good time that we would want to change the opacity. So I'd come up to here and I'd put this opacity at, let's try 30%. Hmm. Let's put it at 10 Okay, let's take this opacity and put it at... All right, so what we're seeing right now is, um, and probably what we want is, we might even want to change this color uh, and maybe even make it a little bit darker. So it has a shadow or maybe it is a little bit more of a reflection um, of this shape and I want to change it a little bit more oops I'm doing that all it's not even selected all right hold on so I'm gonna go for this color right here I'm gonna put this up to 70% up to 80. All right, now don't forget too that we also could come in here. I could come in and grab my uh, gradient and start to work with this and get the darkness where I want it to be. And I actually would bring it in just a little bit more uh, and play around with this until it actually felt right. So it felt more like a shadow on a table. So there we have it working a little bit with the gradient tool. We went over the window, the gradient window. Oh, I want to also show you, I just remembered, how to create a new swatch out of our gradient. I think I just did that, but I'm going to do it one more time. One more time just to review. We'll say this is the one that has the transparency, so we say add to swatches, and there it is. Voila, I could name it, and we could say, you know, transparent swatch.